In this tutorial, I'll introduce you to our new tool, VCF Miner. Beginning first with how to install it on a Windows box, and then I'll show you a couple of examples of how to access and query your data. To begin, let's open up the landing page at bioinformaticstools.mayo.edu. Here you can see all sorts of applications that the Mail Bioinformatics Core has developed, but for this particular instance, we're going to go to the very last one called VCF Miner. So here it just gives you a brief description of what exactly VCF Miner is doing, as well as some of the uh, advantages and key features. So because I'm going to install this on a Windows box, I'm just going to go ahead and click this Windows Installer and Instruction link. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to give me the information I need to get it up and running on my particular box. Uh, if you're inside the Mayo firewall and don't have admin privileges, you can all just jump to this area down here and get uh, permissions. But we'll assume that you're not inside Mayo. So the first step we have to do is we have to install this hotfix, which is basically uh, a problem that Microsoft has that we have to fix on our own. So I'm just going to go ahead and click through uh, all of the terms and conditions that you have to agree to in order to get this fix emailed to you. I'm going to select that I want this and I'll put in my email. and request the hotfix. And what it'll do is uh, Microsoft will actually send you the link to the email. So now I just have to go check my email. I'll do that right here. And I've received the link. It's pretty quick, but it does come with a lot of uh, extra stuff in the email. The package is actually located down at the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and get that downloaded. click run continue uh, one of the things I've noticed with this hotfix is if you uh, unzip it in your root directory the C um, it doesn't unzip properly so I'm actually going to change that and just make it be my desktop and that solves that little problem okay. so now I've unzipped my files and I've got this weird named executable here and what this is doing is now it's actually uh, going to install the hotfix and this can take a couple of minutes and I already have it installed so I'm okay okay so now that I know that I have the hotfix installed I can get rid of the installer and I can go back to the landing page at Bioinformatics Tools and I can proceed to the next step to download the Windows installer. This is the actual installation module for VCF Miner now that we've corrected the uh, Windows issues. So I'm just going to go ahead over and go over here and click the install executable to go ahead and start the process downloading onto my computer give it all the permissions that it needs and uh, this is going to tell you ask you where you want to set it up at uh, I would encourage you just to leave it at the default location which is slash mayo slash VCF minor if you do decide to move it uh, you have to make sure there aren't any spaces in any of your names but I'm just gonna recommend the the default destination folder Okay, what it's doing here is it's actually launched the installer for Google Chrome. Even if you already have Google Chrome installed, it's still going to do this step just to make sure everything's in the right place and everything else works fine. 
we do encourage or recommend that you use Google Chrome as your default uh, web browser uh, as this will not work in Internet Explorer. Okay, so we're just starting to do some checks just to make sure that everything got loaded correctly. And everything is done. So we're now able to close the application. And if you go to your desktop, we now have the VCF minor icon. So now that VCF Miner is installed correctly, let's double check to make sure that everything is set up in a way that will make the application work. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go back to the website that has the instructions and I'm going to download a test VCF file. Okay. This VCF file has already been validated to, to work within the constraints of the VCF specifications and VCF minor. So that really helps to, to tell us that everything is working as it should. So I'm going to go ahead and try and open VCF minor by clicking the desktop icon. And you'll notice, again, because of my administrative privileges, I can't actually run it. It gives me this warning that says access is denied. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And the trick to doing that if you're under different administrative privileges is right click and run as administrator. And here you see that we don't get that uh, warning. So everything should be running smoothly. Okay. Let's go ahead and maximize this. So here we have our basic landing page for VCF Miner. Um, Usually what happens is this has multiple files that you've uploaded and you store over time, but since this is a fresh install, we don't have anything loaded. So let's go ahead and import that test VCF from the website that I just downloaded, and we'll import. So what it's doing now is it's automatically changed the status to importing which is converting the VCF into our back-end database and very quickly it becomes available which causes the load and delete buttons to appear. So this means that the VCF is ready for exploration. So we'll go ahead and load this and it takes us to what's really the main uh, constituent of VCF Miner. So the main page is actually split between two panes. On the left pane, we actually have a tracking system for each of the filters that you'll apply over time to this particular VCF. And on the right is uh, subset selections of the data that's actually viewable. And as you hover over the titles, you'll notice that we've, we've added the hover text that explains what each of the columns are, just in case you forget. So this is only a subset of what's available. So let's dig into what other columns are uh, are viewable and again this is going to change depending on whatever VCF file you have uh, with the exception of certain columns in the VCF spec that are required such as chromosome position ID ref alt qual and filter but really uh, the interesting things are a little bit further down so VCF minor it does very little uh, interpretation of your VCF this is one exclusion we calculate the number of samples and get the sample names. That way we don't have uh, lots of columns. If you have lots and lots of samples, we are able to condense that down into uh, one column. And then we get into the annotations, which again are going to be different for uh, everyone, depending on whatever annotation system you use. So one of the annotation systems we use at Mayo is BioR, which will annotate the info field, and these are the key value pairs that are associated with each VCF. So it doesn't really matter which ones I pick here, um, but there are a couple that I find generally interesting, uh, and they're the SNP effect predictions. So I'm just going to go ahead and select all of the SNP effect annotations.
And I think that's all I'm interested for now. So I'll close. And now as I scroll over, all of the SNP effect annotations, if there are any, are filled in these tables. So now I'm just going to show you a couple of different ways that you can filter your data. Starting over here at the Add Filter button, we have two different types of filters that we can apply. One are sample specific filters, and these are from the annotations that come from the tenth column to however many samples you have in the VCF that you loaded. And then we also have info level uh, annotations, and these are uh, the variant annotations that are annotations irrespective of the sample that they're in. So for instance, allelic frequency in thousand genomes or something about that particular position. So it doesn't change in, in different samples. So the first sample type that I want to apply is, let's say I want to make sure that I have at least four reads in my AD field, which as I hover over here, it tells me what exactly I'm looking at. And I want, so anything less than that, I'm not really interested in. And again, it doesn't really matter what the annotation is as long as you understand it, and it is going to be different for everybody every time you upload a VCF. So I'm just going to add this filter, and you can see that I dropped from 902 variants to 144 variants that meet my criteria. Okay? So you can see how easily these filters are able to be applied. Uh, also in this sample filtering section, we have this samples in group and samples not in group. And I, I, as I mentioned previously, VCF Miner tries not to infer very much from your data, but this is one of those things that really we can actually interpret. So let's say I'm only looking for variants that are in a particular group. So here, since I only have one sample, I'm going to call this my sample group and I only have one sample so I'm going to go ahead and add that guy into my group samples but you can imagine how this would be useful if you had multiple samples and some of them are HER2 positive some of them are ER negative some of them are triple negative you know if you're working with breast cancer or any other way you'd like to break them down this is just a really simple way to, to apply filters to sets of groups so I'm going to create this group that has my one sample in it. So there's just confirms that there's one sample in here. And I'm going to add the filter. And of those 144, there are 110 that are found in this sample. So this VCF from the 1000 Genomes, it actually has some variants that are not actually variant in this position. So we've just got rid of all of those. And these are, represent all of the base change differences from the reference genome in this sample, NA12878. Okay, so those are two different types of sample filters. Let's go ahead and apply an info column filter. And again, these will change depending on what annotation tool that you use. But since most of these happen to be in non-coding regions, I'm going to select UCSC repeat region which is basically just a Smith-Waterman alignment score. And let's say I'm looking for ones that are greater than 5. I apply that filter, and now I'm down to 76. So with these 76 variants, I have the option to either look at it and stay within the context of ECF minor, or I can add additional columns, such as uh, allele frequencies, other information that's pretty standard in VCF files, and let's say I want to know if any of them are clinically significant, and I want the entree ID. So as I applied those, I filled in the information where it exists, and now I've got this table of results that has, uh, let's go back here, so it has 76 variants. So this is all fine and dandy, but how do I get this back into something I can manage like Excel? Well, that's really easy. All you have to do is just export. And when you export, it's going to export a tab delimited file that contains all of the information that you have selected. So for instance, we maintain in the header what filters were applied to the data set. 
so that you can reproduce the data or share your variant filtering criteria with other collaborators and the variants that are left after those filters so there should there's 76 variants left in this and the only columns that are exported are those that were selected in the view so even though there were 37 or 40 different annotations if I'm only interested in 18 of them well that's one way to, to trim it and there you have it so that's basically the crux of VCF minor I hope that you uh, enjoy it and I hope it solves a lot of your informatics needs when it comes to interacting with these large complex cumbersome VCF files